This started nagging at me years ago, when IPAs got popular. Those super bitter beers weren't my thing, but I couldn't figure out why they were anybody's thing. As a biology nerd, I was pretty sure that humans' taste, or distaste really, for bitterness evolved to keep us safe. Like that our very existence depends on us hating bitter stuff. So why were people going crazy for these bitter beers? And the more I pondered this, the more bitter foods I realized I go crazy for. From coffee, to chocolate, to olives, to all sorts of greens. So I dove into a deep rabbit hole, all the way to the bitter end of bitterness. This is Minute Food. Bitterness. You know the feeling, you know the face. Even fetuses still in the womb make that face when they taste bitter stuff. It's innate. And the bitter taste complex driving that response is remarkably, well, complex. We have way more genes that control our ability to taste bitterness than any other taste. And the threshold at which we notice bitterness is way lower than any other taste. Scientists love to fight about stuff, but here they basically agree. We humans possess this deeply innate, complex, finely tuned ability to sense bitterness because having a warning system for certain toxic compounds, those produced by plants as a defense against hungry herbivores, was a big advantage for our ancestors. We're not talking like recent ancestors though. Researchers' best guess is that bitter taste receptors first popped up in aquatic critters more than 400 million years ago. So hating bitter stuff goes way back. But here we are, craving hoppy IPAs, queuing up for coffee and tea, chomping on chocolate and cranberries and kale and all sorts of other foods packed with bitter compounds produced by plants. How did we get here from there? Well, first, we live a rather different life than our ancient aquatic ancestors. Instead of individuals relying on trial and error to figure out what's safe, humans are a smart social species that shares information about what to eat and what not to. Plus, these days, we're not browsing from thousands of unfamiliar plant species. We're generally choosing from a much smaller number of much more familiar foods. Today, for most humans, avoiding plant-produced toxins in our food isn't critical to our survival. And as a result, we've actually lost genes that once helped us taste bitter compounds. And the bitter tasting genes we still have are less functional than they were even a million years ago. Our aversion hasn't disappeared completely, and it now protects us in some weirdly modern ways. If you have a Nintendo Switch, touch the cartridge, then lick your finger. That horrible taste is denatonium benzoate, one of the bitterest known chemicals. And it makes curious kids that put the cartridge in their mouth very unlikely to actually swallow the thing. Not every human is equally sensitive to bitterness, though. Variations in many of those two dozen or so genes that regulate our bitter taste complex can make people more or less sensitive to certain bitter compounds. You can buy cheap test strips online. So in the name of science, I tested my whole family's response to a compound called PTC. Kid one went full on bitter face. And my husband tasted some bitterness. But kid two and I, nothing. We are totally unable to taste this particular compound. People like us may have no problem eating foods that some other people, maybe kid one, might find way too bitter. And age matters too. Our taste receptors lose power as we get older. So something you find super bitter as a kid might taste perfectly fine later in life. But this all only explains why we don't necessarily hate bitter stuff, not why we actively seek it out. And the thing about bitter compounds is that they tend to be biologically active. They affect our bodies in some way, sometimes in harmful ones, but sometimes in healthy ones. Grapefruits triterpenes boost our immune response. The phenols in tea can improve heart health. And organosulfides in the brassica gang do, well, all sorts of stuff. Tons of different animals, from caterpillars to chimpanzees, are known to self-medicate with bitter medicinal plants. And it's likely that we humans, too, seek out certain good-for-us bitter compounds. And actually, we seek out the not-good-for-us ones, too. Because even if they're toxic in large doses, small amounts of certain bitter compounds interact with our bodies in ways that feel good. The caffeine in coffee and tea, the nicotine in tobacco, the alcohols in boozy drinks. We seek them out because we like how they make us feel, and we get used to their bitterness. 
And with enough exposure, we might begin to appreciate that bitterness, which might turn us on to other bitter flavors. And voila, a love for bitter stuff is born. Finally, there's the fact that when we're eating most foods today, we are rarely just tasting bitterness like our plant nibbling ancestors might have been. Whether we're having a radicchio salad or a dark chocolate truffle or a hoppy IPA, the bitterness is balanced by sweetness, saltiness, sourness, umami, spice, fat, volatile aromatics. Bitterness is just one piece of our food's delicious complexity. I will admit that in the years since I started to wonder about this, I've become ever so slightly fonder of IPAs. They still aren't my go-to drink, but they no longer trigger my bitter face, and I enjoy one every now and then, alongside a nice salad of bitter greens.